The single greatest edge an investor can have is a long-term orientation. What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another XRP update. We're also going to be touching on Algo, QNT, XLM, and Ethereum. Let's dive in. First things first, I wanted to highlight this. Mr. Benoit, head of the BIS Innovation Hub. Guys, the Bank of International Settlements, the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS is essentially the central bank for all central banks. Now keep in mind, he is in charge of innovation. He has to support the new technologies that are essentially going to be improving, enabling, and sometimes even disrupting this new financial system. His background speaks for itself, of course, for French Treasury, um, G20, focusing on liquidity management. You guys can see um, other sources as well if you want to see his background. I'm just actually sourcing the official website, BIS.org. And as we can see, I wanted to highlight this. This is a tweet back in, I believe, let's see, um, February 2020, where the Bank for International Settlements was sharing this. And we have this gentleman just saying XRP adoption. Boom. Now, of course, and we all highlighted it, the XRP community went crazy. We can see that Benoit, in fact, on his Twitter, liked this tweet. Now, some people think it means that XRP is going to go to four digits overnight. That's all good and great. What I'm saying is, though, that this gentleman is validating XRP as a viable option for the future of finance. It's one of the few digital assets that has done over $2 billion in transaction volume for not me and you, but for real customers, real financial institutions. So that's just something I consider as a long-term hold in this space. Um, I don't think he's going to be liking, you know, Dogecoin per se, not to bash on any specific asset. I know that, you know, Doge with Flare, Flare Networks will help unlock the value, but I just want to say look at the people that are behind this group they may not want some facebook libra to take over the world and maybe they don't want xrp to take over the world either but if you had to choose they would want ripple rather than facebook because ripple's actually trying to decentralize the ledger over time you cannot dispute that and yes the holdings are becoming more decentralized as well so let's move on guys i just wanted to touch on that now Big news right here. So, you know, XRP has been quoted to be dead 1,000 times, just like Bitcoin. I'll believe it when I see it. We can see now Wanchain. Do you know that Wanchain is bringing XRP into the DeFi fold? Boom, I love this. Ever-growing developments in building in a variety of areas. So I'm beyond excited, of course. And we can just kind of read through this thread here. I used to own Wanchain. I do not believe I own any. I mean, maybe just fractions of it, but I have not looked at the chart. Probably missed out on some gains as always because everything is just popping up left and right. You can see, do you know that XRP integration brings Turing complete smart contracts to Ripple? Do you know that XRP will be able to interact with other integrated chains like EOS, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and of course, WAN? Do you know that XRP holders will be able to use dApps like WANSwap, Walllend, and Finexus, and more? Do you know that WANchain is the first decentralized blockchain interoperability solution to bring all of these use cases to XRP holders? Do you know full Ripple integration? And keep in mind, back in the day, you know, the Ripple protocol, they would just kind of call XRP Ripple back in the day. Of course, we know that the digital asset is specifically called XRP, and Ripple is the company right at the end of the month. So we're going to keep an eye on this for DeFi. All good and great, guys. Builders keep building. Next, I just wanted to briefly highlight PolySign. I know everybody's just, if you're an XRP holder, they're calling us idiots and saying PolySign will never have anything to do with XRP in the future. Yeah, whatever you say. I mean, this speaks for itself, of course. This is on PolySign.io. You can see the people behind PolySign. One of the gentlemen, actually the vice chairman, retired of BNY Mellon, custodying one-fourth of all of the global institutional assets. No big deal. We can see MUFG, HSBC, two of the largest banks in the world that are already RippleNet, um, also part of Promontory Financial Group, and she he actually was speaking at the International Monetary Fund on behalf of PolySign as head of compliance, and she was also the chief compliance officer over at Ripple Labs for several years. Interesting. Then we have Arthur Brito, XRP Ledger, you guys know him, David Schwartz, of course, and then even Jack McDonald, one of the global custodi custodians, custodians, and he was actually inducted into the Legends of Industry, so kind of like a Hall of Fame. So I think this speaks for itself, and of course, PolySign, guys, you can visit the website at polysign.io. Transacting in digital assets of cross capital markets, but of course you need scalable infrastructure, you need security, you need all these promises, and hopefully regulation really starts keeping up. Because right now, the United States, as said by many professionals, the United States was one of the biggest countries that profited and did exceptionally well during the dot-com bubble because they had clear guidelines of what companies could and could not do. 
right now it is very obvious there is a digital cold war going on if the united states does not get their act together the innovation will go elsewhere it has no choice you cannot put this genie back in the bottle it is already happening and there's no disputing that you can see these companies are getting massive valuations coinbase had what almost like a 90 to 100 billion dollar valuation on the public markets that is crazy money and right now even the global cryptocurrency market is what almost approaching the value of just a single company's market cap such as apple um you understand the global stock market surpassed 100 trillion dollars 100 trillion with a t and we're at what approaching 2 trillion so in the scheme of things you could make the argument that 2 trillion is just a drop in the bucket yes there's going to be massive pullbacks there's going to be massive pumps and we can do our best to capitalize and try to trade those as much as possible but i have a long-term bag of crypto specifically xrp that i just cannot risk letting go of and that's just my personal choice as an investor you all have to decide what is best for you what you can afford to let sit and essentially try to forget or do your best to it without checking price every 10 seconds like i'm guilty of but just part of the game so everybody has to find that of course i have my short-term trading bags that i do my best to obviously make moves on the market add to my us dollar position add to my long-term holds and add to my xrp position but we are all just doing our best here guys there's no right way there's simply your way all right so as long as you have exposure to this market or you're at the very least paying attention to it now i think that we are well ahead of the curve and well ahead well ahead well ahead of the majority of people that are simply still you know interested in the stock market digitalization digitization is here it's not turning back and of course this pandemic has accelerated these efforts right here guys x underscore anderson a must follow follow strictly utility i always respect his research and his speculation on top of that and we know mit specifically massachusetts institute of technology now they're behind many assets like algorand which is one of my big bags one of my long-term holds that we've been talking about on this channel since we are even under uh, what under 20 cents at the very least um, but i know we started talking about it a lot more when it was getting some power over at 30 cents but nonetheless guys mit Behind, of course, XRP, it runs a validator on the XRP ledger. They've always been focused on digital currency. They have many initiatives. Um, Algorand Foundation essentially is basically born out of MIT if you do the research. And it's just very interesting. Silvio Micali, you know, all the people. And then QNT as well, another one of our long-term holds, at least on this channel. Now, I'm just going to speed through a few things. And if you guys have time, go watch some of those old hour-long interviews of Gary Gensler, the new SEC chairman now, discussing digital currency, discussing XRP, discussing even Algo, discussing Ethereum, a lot of exciting assets. So he knows his stuff, and I know actually David Schwartz's commentary yesterday in the interview with uh, Tony from Thinking Crypto was very interesting. Um, he said, yeah, he said some good things about Ripple. Um, in XRP and he said some bad things but it's good because he values that Gary Gensler actually is familiar with the space and I'd much rather have somebody that is incentivized to give clarity and at least do their job correctly so all good and great I'm excited and nervous as well to see what he says in the future but we will be paying close attention just a few things that even Gary has said in his classes if you guys have watched I always play his videos on 2x speed if I'm you know long drive work out whatever I can um, just because I'm insane and I never stop researching but MIT was involved in laying out the architectural principles on which the internet is based the bedrock the foundation early development of the TCP IP protocol stack in the early TCP IP implementations the internet of information and you guys know Ripple is responsible essentially for building the Interledger protocol, which is building the internet of value, transacting value seamlessly without friction. Now, remember I said that frictionless transactions, they coined that term. So we're going to go back and I mean, we're talking dated back years ago, and then we're going to look into the future and see who's using that terminology now can't lose the game if it was their game to begin with so we have gary gensler professor of the practice of global economics and management mit very smart dude and he goes on and says he conducts research and teaches on blockchain tech digital currencies he knows his stuff if you hear him talk you will be um you'll always learn something and former cftc gary gensler is tipped to become the next sec chief teaching about crypto blockchain at mit also right here MIT you guys get the gist um essentially just creating this whole internet and notice they founded the W3C at MIT what's the W3C the World Wide Web Consortium they essentially govern the entire internet no big deal and guess what Ripple created interledger protocol the kind of the the TCP IP of value transaction correct and it was gifted to W3C 
the people that govern the entire internet. Do you see how this game is played? And no big deal, of course, we know like the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, of course, is actively working with Mojo Loop, which is tied into Interledger Protocol as well. Uh, some people actually hate Algorand too, which I don't understand. Um, if you're not, if you hate QNT, XRP, and Algo, I, I don't get it. Um, I'm in the space to invest in the technology that's going to change lives. And some people do not like Algo, pure proof of stake, because they say the holdings are relatively centralized. People say the same thing about XRP, but guess what? I'd rather invest into an asset that does a top-down approach and has an actual plan and a method to the madness instead of just winging it, and these technologies already speak for themselves. We know Algo, one of the few that's already working with a small country like the Marshall Islands on building a central bank digital currency. Now, of course, even David Schwartz did reference this, um, and it's not like they're you know using the US or China or a massive nation yet, but we are in the early stages, guys, of the internet of value. This is all good and great. I support innovation in any way. So just pointing that out. Um, yep, do your own research on these assets. I'm not telling you to buy them. But yes, I do own QNT, XRP, and Algo. And I'm waiting for my XRP bag to catch up to these guys because they've been a top performer this year, at least since January at the very least. So you guys can look into all of this. X underscore Anderson, phenomenal researcher, okay? And he even got me more bullish on QNT. Um, even though I did share my buys like early in 28 or late 2018, super late, like October, November, um, kind of when it really went live. And then after I talked to uh, King Solomon, of course, he made me FOMO way more later in 2020 and also FOMO'd more in 2019. So always wish I had more. I always wish I had more XRP, XLM, you name it, but just part of the game, guys. So I'm holding a portion for life because I just don't know where the top is. All right, we can gauge it with fibs, but that's really just guessing. So Matthew L-I-N-Y, Bank of Thailand test results on DLT distributed ledger technology in the financial sector. So just to point a few things out really quick, um, this is all good and great. We can see Ethereum's logo right here in network participants, central bank digital currencies, blah, 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 application layer, all that. And then right here, this prototype is based on the Ethereum protocol using Hyperledger. So Hyperledger, guys, we know that they've already been working with even Amazon, and I shared all of that. The Amazon, that blockchain service, was beyond interesting. Um, Hyperledger is a consortium that, of course, Ripple was joined or joined long, long ago. I have all that sourced if you guys type in like Kevin Cage, uh, Amazon, blockchain, Ripple XRP, Ethereum. It's like a two minute video you can probably find in YouTube. So all good and great. Just wanted to point that out. Next up, students in Georgia set to be taught about crypto at high school. So check this out, guys. We have a new financial literacy program that was approved by the Georgia House of Representatives. So, yep, the first step, of course, is knowledge. So all good and great to see this. I hope this catches, but I think that the states in the U.S. are going to be relatively slow to implement a lot of this stuff, unfortunately. I mean, just think about how typical high school and junior high works. Yeah, you're I mean, you're in school and I was learning about literally, you know, bookkeeping and finances for institutions and corporations. But why didn't we really learn that for a personal level in high school? It's ridiculous. So now we're realizing that YouTube can teach a lot more people than we think. And those that are, um, what do they say in Spanish? Autodidactos, like people that are self-taught, um, are going to really just get way ahead of the curve. Depending on, of course, if you're going to be a doctor, yes, you have to go to schooling. But I'm telling you, there's plenty of opportunity for a lot of new people to give rise to, I guess, some type of a digital uh, venture capital, kind of like a lot of a new wave of uh, VCs in the space, specifically because the Internet of Value. We have, you know, cities like Miami that are seeming like they're crypto friendly with the new mayor. I think there's going to be a lot of new fintech apps. I'm just excited because I've heard that Miami is kind of turning into the new Silicon Valley. Um, I know Austin, Texas as well. I know everybody's moving there. It's all good and great. And we're just going to kind of see how these waves um, hit the mainstream. Next up, we have Interstellar and Velo Labs have joined forces, guys. So all good and great. So San Francisco based Interstellar. So just think Stellar, the development foundation, and of course their asset XLM. And then through or based out of Southeast Asia, we have Velo Labs. They're going to be enabling faster, cheaper, cross-border payments in Southeast Asia on the Stellar blockchain. So I think this is good news. I want to see developments, and I'm curious in the future performance of XLM as well. Um, and also, I know a lot of people have been asking about Velo, so I do need to do more research into them. I've looked at them, you know, a few times over, what, in 2020 as well. But uh, yeah, something to keep tabs on for me personally, and I always will wish I had more XLM too. So, oh well. 
Next up, so we have VH. You can follow her at Varg underscore 88. So I just wanted to cover Quant briefly. Notice Quant Network being mentioned in blockchain interoperability paper by the World Bank. We will cover the World Bank last video if you had time to check that out with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. One more confirmation being QNT is becoming a global company and a synonym for universal DLT interoperability. I love it. QNT interoperability, XRP, I think liquidity, complementary services. All right. So right here, overledger platform by Quant Network in this document by the World Bank. Funny enough, we also have Ripple, EOS, IOTA, Bitcoin, and a few others named Hyperledger Fabric, Corda, Ethereum, you name it. So all good and great. Just wanted to point that out and shout out everybody in the QNT community. So, Quant Networks, multi-blockchain dApps and maps as well. Can't forget about those. I just wanted to share that. And on to the next one. Also, Martin Volk just sharing this. So, this is recently from Swift. So, we're transforming. And remember, I was talking about frictionless transfer. Notice their words right here. And this was just posted. The Swift platform to enable instant and frictionless transactions from account to account anywhere in the world. Now, I'm not saying XRP. I'm not saying any crypto specifically. What I'm saying is real-time payments are pushing. And yes, even the dinosaur Swift with over 11,000 institutions is starting to catch up. I know that CBDCs are always getting pushed back year Year after year, it's exhausting. But once again, and I've said this a thousand times, you cannot put the genie back in the bottle. It's unlocking value, guys. This will unlock huge opportunities for our community for over 11,000 institutions. Just think Pareto's Law, the 80-20 principle, as I say time and time again, every time I talk about the 11,000 institutions under Swift, if you have the top 20% of those 11,000 institutions, Typically, you're going to see that that top 20% of institutions, which is a lot smaller than that number, usually accounts for 80% of the volume and payment transactions. So if you wanted Ripple to disrupt or even just enable this area, we don't have to dominate the 11,000 institutions. We have to go after the big boys, the top 20%, which account for 80% of the, that monetary transaction. Interesting. Also, really quick here, so this is kind of scary. Report all crypto transactions or you're going to be facing a five-year jail term in South Korea. Yikes. So strict reporting rules for crypto businesses in South Korea are set to come into effect with existing firms given six months to comply or face stiff penalties. So be safe out there, guys. Make sure you are filing your taxes as we are approaching April. Um, also, just a public service announcement because everybody asks every single time. All links I use, guys, um, all services that I actively use today, not used to use, that I use today are in my youtube video description right here tax bit this is a review that i wrote if you guys are interested in filing taxes whether you just have coinbase or you are a big trader and you have 30 different exchanges you leverage metamask a bunch of cold storage wallets you're staking you have to account for that so just please be safe um, i use tax bit highly recommend it easy ux easy like best customer support if i use an otc broker for over-the-counter buys like large transactions outside of the us because i'm a us investor um i highly recommend even caleb and brown they're linked in the video description all services so when i do big buys i'm not you know using exchanges no offense to like uphold and all those other groups but i would much just rather you know send a message on telegram shoot an email give a phone call and get it done and just automate my process so i can focus on what i do best all right so tax bit highly recommend it this is coming from a guy that has used the other services even the mainstream ones that other people discuss tax bit all the way it's a no-brainer for me also european crypto company bitpanda has raised 170 million now we see another crypto company their valuation is approximately 1.2 billion what on earth do you think that ripple will be in the future remember coinbase was 8 billion back in the day and then around that time ripple was 10 billion so it was higher now we have coinbase roughly 90 to 100 billion what do you think ripple is going to be so yes that's why the sec is terrified they're trying to figure out the escrow amount the huge holdings of the executives then xrp can be set free and they're going to see what happens we're going to see if there's going to be fines at play i don't really know i'm keeping up with all the lawyers in the space but i still believe that xrp will be fine as a global currency all right so I don't think, yeah, at one time, just like Ethereum, Gary Gensler said the same thing about ETH, and it was not a nice comment about Ethereum, and he's not had nice comments about XRP, but then he said that Ethereum transformed and it was relatively less centralized, the holdings, the foundation. So no project is perfect, guys. If you're looking for the perfect investment, I'd have to tell you to turn around, um, and I'm not going to be interested in the stock market either, um, especially at these all-time highs. So, all right. Right here, so now we have eToro going public via a $10 billion SPAC, guys. This merger that is worth over $10 billion. Yikes. That's I mean, this is just crazy money. It does kind of scare me at times, so you just never know. So please be aware. 
Um, but this is getting attention. So public, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. We're almost done. And right here, so we have Korean crypto trading volume. Now, the volume overall has surpassed the national stock exchange. So crypto traders in South Korea have pushed crypto transaction rates higher than the national stock market. This is crazy. As I already referenced in the beginning of this video, the total global, not crypto market cap, but the total global stock market has surpassed $100 trillion. And that was a few months ago. Yikes. I mean, just imagine where crypto will be in the next five to 10 years. My personal belief, you guys can think it's biased, but I believe that we are still in such, such early uh, stages. And this is a nascent market cap, meaning it is very, very young. It's not mature yet. It has tons of upside potential year over year. But please do not go all in. I'm not telling you to buy and you know expect millions the next day. You have to be safe. Um, and my best friend, at least in this market over the past few years, is dollar cost averaging with only money that I can afford to put in the market and let mature and wait. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one.